So what are the characteristics of autism? What do children who have autism look like and act like? Well, if you remember, we're talking about deficits in three areas, the quality of the communication, the quality of the social interactions, and then having restricted interest and repetitive behaviors. And starting off with the quality of the social uh, interactions, there's things like poor response to name being called. Uh, you may say a child's name over and over to the point where parents even wonder if the child is um, hard of hearing. Um, one uh, early sign that comes up is um, if children don't have appropriate language development, how do they express their needs and communicate? One thing we might look for is, do they use their index finger to point? And this is something that's pretty well studied in a sensitive marker, something that's even used on some of our questionnaires for children for possible autism. That index finger pointing, we expect to start seeing around 12, uh, 15 months old um, as an, an important way for them to express their needs. And even one of the ways where children with language delay um, without having autism will often have very good uh, nonverbal ways uh, to communicate, like pointing. Sustained, odd, or peculiar play, especially with non-toy items. So one of the questions I'll often ask is, um, what does your child like to play with that at home? <clears throat> if parents say, well, they spend a lot of time shredding papers, uh, stacking pots and pans, uh, opening and closing doors, or even if they're playing with their toys in inappropriately, for example, if they have a car or a train, um, and, and they prefer to watch the wheel spin or line them up rather than play with them appropriately, then that's a little bit suspicious. Inappropriate attachment to objects. One of the things when I have a child come into the office that I'll, that, that I'll see and initially makes me a little bit concerned is if they have a very um, a worn um, a, a toy that they've got this uh, very strong uh, grip on and, and the mom says, oh, they just love their and it can be whatever, their little um, train, their little dolly, uh, maybe even at an inappropriate age if I have a five or six year old come in who's had a toy for many years and there's this very strong attachment to the certain toy or a particular style of toy. Uh, children who are into a particular action figure um, or a certain sort of uh, train uh, or, or, or doll. Children who have uh, inappropriate um, fear or inappropriate lack of fear, sometimes parents will describe their children as dangerously daring, will get themselves into precarious positions, uh, climbing. Uh, they may be um, um, what a dad might describe as a little bruiser, uh, fall down, hit his, hit, hit his head, and kind of just keep on rolling, um, reach for objects, crashing into, crashing in, into things, uh, seemingly indifferent to it. And then um, for older kids, although it's not part of the diagnostic criteria, but it's almost universally seen, our attention and distractibility problems, kind of these ADHD-like symptoms. Um, so when I have a child come in with um, attention and distractibility, starting in preschool, uh, kinder first, um, often I'll step back a little bit and in taking a history, uh, some things might come up where I wonder, uh, is this maybe just a pervasive developmental disorder like autism or Asperger's, uh, but what we're seeing in this child are more ADHD-like symptoms. Very common characteristic for uh, early school age children uh, with autism. Now the language development can be interesting, like I had mentioned earlier. Uh, it can be children who are essentially mute, I mean, they really don't say anything, to children who have a lot of language coming out, but it's not used to communicate well. The children don't realize the power of, of their words. Pathological speech, echolalia, either repeating what they say or what their parents might say, or scripted speech, uh, being able to uh, recite uh, text out of a book or words out of a, a video. Sometimes when I have children come in with a diagnosis written down on the, on the new patient intake and it's something like a phonemic awareness disorder, um, actually just, or, or maybe something like a speech apraxia, um, it, it makes me a little bit concerned about autism because uh, it is something that's almost um, universally seen, seen very commonly in children with autism is, is, is having um, either dropping off syllables or getting some, some of the syllables mixed up um, in, in the words. And that, that sometimes will lead parents to believe, well, is this really a pervasive developmental disorder or something like an auditory processing uh, disorder? We'll often use um, other clues like social development, repetitive behaviors, and rigidity uh, to help sort through, through that. In the next section, we'll talk a little bit about how to make a diagnosis of autism, what you might expect uh, your neurologist or developmental pediatrician to do to help come up with a diagnosis.